Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? It is Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. And uh, it's been a pretty good day today. I hope you've had a good day today. I have. Um, I have just been, had to go and run an errand, had to do some shopping. But my birthday is coming up on Saturday, so I got me some um, ear pods. And of course, I didn't bring my music in again today. So I guess we'll do this without music. So today, I wanted to talk to you about He Prepares Our Way. He being Jesus, I thought we would talk about some of the ways that he prepares us in our Christianity, how we learn, how he's preparing a place for us, how he will, again, come back and get us, which will be so awesome. So I want to share the song that I shared this afternoon. I'm getting to where I don't get these done. My share's done in the mornings like I used to, so it's kind of a... It's kind of hard. Yep, that's recording. I don't know why my phone is like sitting right on top of this other camera. I don't know. I might could move it. Oh, I'm not even going to mess with it. Okay, well, let's pray. Let's jump into some prayer. Okay, something is showing up on this camera. It's my phone. It's my phone again. It likes to show up. Scoot it over a little bit. There we go. So it won't be. All right. Okay, well, let's pray. Let's jump into some prayer. Let's pray to God. Let's thank Him for Jesus that prepares our way for us. That um, God just um, teaches us the things that we need to know we feel inadequate but he is the one that equips us so let's pray god we just come to you and we just thank you god for all that you do and for all that you are god you are on your throne and you are in control god we love you with our whole hearts our soul our mind and our strength thank you for being our creator thank you for being our sustainer and our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm. Thank you, God, for just helping us and just teaching us along the way. Thank you that you are magnificent and mighty and powerful, but yet you are loving and kind, long-suffering, forgiving, and so powerful, God. You are so powerful. You are faithful. You keep all your promises, God. All your prophecies will be fulfilled. God, we just lift up the sick to you. We just pray that you would heal their bodies. We lift up these uh, people that were in this motorcycle accident over the weekend, God. We just pray that you would heal them, that you would draw them close to you, and that you would give their family strength as they recover. And God, we just pray, we pray for um, all the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would soften their hearts, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we pray for the prodigals to come home. We just pray for them to repent and to return. And God, we pray for all the disasters that just happen all the time, every day. There is something that happens, God. And we just pray. We just pray for the people involved, God. We just pray that their needs would be met through this hard time in their lives, God. That they would see the love and the compassion of Jesus in others. And God, they would see the light of Jesus in others. God, we just pray for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would um, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, and that they would feel your presence in the absence of their loved one. God, we just pray for all the people on the front line, our medical workers, our 
law enforcement, our firefighters, our first responders, and all branches of our military. We just pray that you would give them strength and protection and just help them to do their job to the best of their ability. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, I need to go get my water. And I'm so sorry, but I am really thirsty. And I'm going to go get me a cup of water. And I will be right back. And I do apologize for being late, Logo. I was sitting right here. I don't know how I can be late when I'm sitting right here in front of this computer. Everything's ready to go. I'll be right back. I do apologize. I do have a your you only live forever um, if you are in Christ. If you are in Christ, John eleven twenty three. <laughs> My sister gave me this many years ago. And so I set up my camera wall go and I go my shirt looks blue. It doesn't look purple. This is, that's purple. I want it to look purple. I don't want it to look blue. Purple is my favorite color. And so I messed with the camera a little bit and I made myself really white, but that doesn't matter. I wanted my purple t-shirt to show. Okay. Mm. I'm so sorry, but I was thirsty. Okay, of course I did not uh, number these, so this will be an interesting night. We'll be winging it tonight. Okay, but first of all, I wanted to uh, read to you what I wrote on Facebook today. So this was just this afternoon. So when my son and I went to the bank this afternoon, I was listening to the radio and the song Confidence by Sanctus Real came on. And I haven't heard it in a long time, but I just stopped to listen to the lyrics and I really like the lyrics to this song and it really fits, I think what I want, what God wants me to talk about tonight. So I heard this song in message by Sanctus Real on the radio when I went to run an errand. I love the lyrics of this song. We all need to be prepared to walk through the fire, face the giants, face the lions and giants, Walk through the wilderness like all the great fathers of faith, hope, strength, and bravery that went before us. We can have confidence that we are being prepared for the battle. It is spiritual and it is so intense right now. There is so much evil taking place every day. I don't know if you see it, but it's happening. It is happening every day and it's spiritual warfare. Um. Jesus will go before us and prepare the way. He will help us navigate what is up ahead, and He will protect us from the wolves that gather around us. Through salvation in Jesus, we will never have to face our enemies on our own. 
we can stand confident that He has overcome the world and He is preparing a place for us all now. He came and died for all, no one excluded, all. Everyone is invited into the kingdom of God. Everyone has the choice to choose Jesus or not, but not choosing Him as your Savior comes with grave con consequences, and it does. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only way. I put Jesus. I got to go back and edit that. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so I kind of end it. I'm going to go ahead and edit that right now. Because I will forget. And it's not Jesus, it's Jesus. Oh, I can't pull it over here so I can read it. Well, that's not helpful. Alright, well, I'll just have to do it later. Hopefully I'll remember. Okay, well, let's get into the Word. Let's get into God's Word because that is where all the answers are. This is our basic instructions for before leaving Earth, the B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. That is what I heard Greg Laurie say. I don't know if that is his own coin of phrase, but it is so true. These are in our instructions. In Proverbs, which is... Um, hmm, it has a lot of instructions and a lot of wisdom in it. So the first... Um, The first verse is uh, Proverbs, Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. Uh-oh, my Beatitudes fell. I don't know why my Beatitudes fall from time to time. Just won't stand up. I'll put this little rock in front of them. Okay. Proverbs 6, 6 through 8 says this. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? So to me, that's kind of saying um, that we do need to we need to be prepared. We need to prepare also. Like we need, we need Jesus to prepare for us, to prepare our way. But we need to be diligent about it also, just like the ant. You know, the ant works all the time so that the ant has what she needs. We need to work for what we need also. But Jesus will lead us where, where we need to go. So we need to be diligent. We need to be diligent about preparation. Alright, let's see what the next one is. Let's go to Proverbs 16. Well, it says 1 through 33. I don't know whether I'll read all of that or not. Proverbs 16, 1 through 33. And I'm kind of winging it tonight. I'm, I'm, uh, I knew this was the message, but I'm just kind of winging it. I'm just I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will lead me where I need to go. 
Okay, Proverbs 16, 1 through 33. Let's see what this is about. Let's just read it and see what it's about. The preparation of, preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of evil. I think we are seeing the day of evil right now. I do. Every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord, though though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. Wow, this is good. This is good stuff right here. <laughs> this is what we're seeing. We're seeing people with great revenues, but they are not doing the things that are right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth, trans his mouth transgresseth not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. So the Lord has a just weight. His, his scales are balanced. They are not tipped to one side. That's what unbalanced scales are. And we talked about that one night about blind justice that there is no blind justice that the lady justice that has the blindfold on and, the, and is holding the scales it's not blind anymore but God's weight is just and all the weights of the bag are his work it is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the deceit of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. The wrath of a king is, is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. I'm going to make sure that's still on. It is. I'm sorry, but I don't trust that anymore. I'm moving my mouse way over here. Okay. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. How much better it is to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather than to be chosen to be chosen than silver. Rather to be chosen I'm sorry, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction in a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. But the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire. 
A froward man soweth strife, and a whisper separateth chief friends. A whisperer, a whisperer, that would be a backbiter. That does, that does end friendships a lot. A violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him into the way that it is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise froward things, moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. The hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Okay, so this was just a lot of um, information. <laughs> that was a lot about being righteous and not being righteous. So God's word prepares our way. He prepares us by teaching us what he, who He wants us to be. Who He wants to see His children be. He doesn't want His children prideful. He doesn't want His children having lots of riches. He wants His children to be humble, to be loving, to be kind, to be compassionate. To walk in the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's a lot. I have it memorized, though. I'm quite proud of myself. Galatians 5.22, I even know where it is. So that's, that is good for me to know where it is and to have it memorized. So we need to walk in that. And so... God gives us this preparation of His Word to teach us what He wants us to do. And so that, that was very good. That was very good. I'm glad we read that. Let's see what else we can read. That was kind of long. Let's see what else. Okay, so let's read Romans 12, 1 through 2, about presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice. Okay, Romans 12. 1 through 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we are to... Be a living sacrifice. We are to give up the things, lay them down, the things that do not please God. We are to pick up the things that do please God. We are not to be transformed by the world. We are supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which comes from reading God's Word that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So God wants us prepared as Christians. He wants us to know, to have that faith, to have that faith like Daniel did in the lion's den, to have that hope 
like Moses did in the wilderness to have the strength like David to have the bravery like David David stood up against a lot of giants and a lot of armies that many he was outnumbered but David had that strength and David had that bravery and so we are to have that too God is preparing us for that too Jesus is preparing us Jesus came to give us that example to prepare our way to show us that love that compassion the joy he came to show us all those things and through salvation we receive the Holy Spirit so we get love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control it's, it's our choice what we do with it because it's really hard to be all that at the same time it's kind of like more of a juggling act for me I can do a few of them at the same time but it's awfully hard to keep all of them going at the same time but that's really what he wants he really does want that for us well hi my friend Josie my day was great how was yours so that is how God and Jesus are preparing us they're preparing our way um, let's read let's read hmm so many good things to read I don't know which one to read next a lot of this is about end times Okay, let's read 2 Timothy 2.15. Got to find 2 Timothy 2.15. There we are. Okay, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is uh, Hymenius and Philetus who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Hmm. I don't remember ever reading that before. I mean, I read, I know that I've read some of this, but um, I have read 15 and I've read 16, but I don't remember reading that about the vessels, the vessel of gold and silver and of wood and earth some to honor and some to dishonor I guess because what it's saying is that God knows who his are he knows Jesus knows who his are God knows who his children are Jesus knows who has been saved and um, so it's not for us to try to figure it out that is up to God If a man therefore purge himself from these, he, he shall be a vessel under, unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, 
and prepared unto every good work. There's that word again, prepared. Jesus prepares us. Because of Jesus, we are being prepared. We are all, if you're saved, you're a work in progress. None of us have arrived yet as being that perfect Christian, and we probably never will on this side of heaven. It's always going to be a struggle. It's always going to be hard. But because of Jesus, it makes it easier because if we put away, if we depart from the iniquity, then we are vessels of honor, we're sanctified, and we are meat for the Master's use. So in order to be prepared for what God has called us to do, it says, Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So we are, he sees us as righteous when we put away these things of the world and we embrace the things of eternal life. And He prepares us. He prepares us for things that we're going to go through. He prepares us for uh, things that He's called us to do. He prepares us for that. And so we don't have to worry about, well, I'm not equipped to do that. And that that is the biggest lie of Satan. And that is what keeps people from doing what they're called to do because they don't feel like they're good enough. They don't feel like they are equipped enough. Well, we all we have to do is be willing and God will do the equipping. He will do the preparation. He will prepare. He will teach us what He wants us to know. <clears throat> he will sometimes give us a job that's going to prepare us. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> he will give us a job that we have for a while that will prepare us for something that He has called us to. Because He is the one that does the preparation. Jesus is the one that has prepared the way through His sacrifice, through the salvation that He offers us, through um, the fact that He's coming back to get us. You know, He's preparing a place for us now. He is, um, let's see if it's one of these verses over here. He told um, he told the disciples that he is going to prepare us a place, but he will come back. So he is going to come back and get us. He is. But we have to be willing. We have to be willing to learn. We have to be willing to get out God's word every day to pray, to be still before God and see what God is telling us. We have to be willing. We have to be willing to take part in this uh, preparation that Jesus is doing. We have to be willing to step away of, from the things of the world that separate us from God. We need to embrace the things that are in, eternal and to walk with Jesus because just like I said on Facebook, Jesus protects us. He navigates for us. He goes before us. He knows what's ahead. We have no idea what's ahead in our lives. We do not know from one second to the next what's going to happen. We just don't. And it's probably a good thing that we don't. It's a good thing that things just happen as they happen. Um because that's 
you know, in a way, God's will because it, what we're going through might be preparing us to encourage somebody else that's fixing to go through the same thing. You know, a lot of times that's happened in my life. I've gone through things that were really, really hard, but yet Jesus walked me through it. He prepared the way through it. But then on the other side, I had the opportunity to help somebody else that was going through the same thing. And so that's that's what we are called to do. We are called to uh, share with people and encourage other people. And Jesus prepares the way for that. Um, I wonder where that verse is that... Um, I don't see it on here and I know it's probably in most of the most of the Gospels I just don't know for sure where it is I'm gonna see if I can find it real quick but um, Ah, I found it. God is so good. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may, may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. So, he goes, he's gone to prepare a place for us. And he will come back. And in God's house there are many mansions. So he's gone to prepare a place specifically for us unique for each person that he's preparing a place for so he prepares the way he prepares the way here on this earth and he is preparing the way in heaven he is the one that prepares the way for us and to recap the other night we read John 14 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So he is the only way. He is the only path to God. And he is preparing a place for us. But he helps us here also. Even though he's preparing a place for us, he is still helping us here also. And we have the Holy Spirit that gives us discernment, that gives us conviction, that gives us confirmation and affirmation, and that utters what we need to have uttered in our prayers to God. We have that helper, we have that comforter here on this earth that Jesus gives us when we invite him into our heart to be our Savior. We get the Holy Spirit too. So, um... I think that's all that God wants me to share out of scripture with that. I didn't mark any of the scriptures that I shared, so it'd be really hard to go back and do this lesson again. But I feel like God led me where I needed to go. I hope it's clear to people. I believe that if the Holy Spirit took me wherever I needed to go, then it probably is. Okay, so these are my notes from this morning so good morning God good morning child I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings child new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus also a new beautiful day child to get things done and I said thank you God for a new day of mercies and blessings new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus thank you for a new beautiful day to get things done he said, child, please focus on what I need to say because I had, I don't know, my mind had wandered between the time that I wrote this down 
and he said that my mind had wandered to like six different subjects I can't remember right now what they were <clears throat> and I said sorry God I started thinking about one thing that led to many more and please speak to me when he said so much is taking place at the same child so at the same time child so keep your focus on Jesus know that all things and events are pointing to his return his glorious appearing to all people every day gets closer and closer to this moment all that you see in here point towards it so people need to get ready because your king is coming soon very soon and people that continue to sit between Jesus and the world will see my wrath poured out on humanity they do not want to be here please keep sharing my truths in the gospel too these are the most important now so do not miss opportunities to be obedient to me child you are in such a great place to be able to share I am multiplying my message through you in ways that you can't see many are listening and many are learning by what you are willing to share even the hard things that I ask you to share many are listening many will be saved and many will return to me through the words that the Holy Spirit leads you to I know that you feel inadequate for this calling but I equip the willing children and I said thank you God I do feel inadequate but I look at the triumphs through you and the testimony of your faithfulness and I know you want me to share and encourage others you are training me for more than I can see or understand I trust you fully God with all I have I am content with what I have and the things that I do not have help me to focus on the most important things God and not to get distracted by what is temporary help me to focus on Jesus and his glorious appearing which our hope in this evil which is our hope in this evil and dying world thank you for meeting me today I love you with my whole heart soul mind and strength give my mama and daddy a hug God I miss both of them a lot and all of my family and friends with you also he said I love you too my child my precious daughter now go be obedient to me in all I ask and work hard today child the reunion is so soon child so be ready to keep moving forward with Jesus and keep sharing with others you are enough child I have equipped you for your calling I equip all my children for to fulfill their plan and purpose someday child it will all be so clear and you will see how all pieces in your life fit perfectly according to what I wanted you to learn help me help with wait a minute and help with to further my kingdom the reunion will be so beautiful all my children seeing how things and hmm, events fit together to impact others towards my kingdom and I said Maranatha God I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready not that I hate this world I don't hate this world I do think this world is getting more and more evil every day I do see that very clearly through God's Word and um, just through <laughs> events and things that are going on evil is just out there and um, they just don't even hide it anymore so but God is sovereign overall and we just need to trust him that's what we need to do we need to put one foot forward in front of the other and just keep trusting Jesus knowing that he prepares our way that he sees what's ahead in front of us and he knows how to navigate around it or he knows how to take us through it and we just need to trust him so let's see I think I want to do the salvation message this way tonight. 
so oh that's the Spanish side okay for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes Romans 1 16 okay so I guess I need to pick this up too okay so the gold the gold the gold color represents God the creator of all who lives in heaven the Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness God is perfect God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you Jesus is God's son the Bible says that Jesus and God are one again this is the E band 3 this is not anything that I made up this is the E band 3 I hope y'all can see it okay this is the E band this is their this is their document the dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that we all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. So the first mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? Well, then we move to the red. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life with God the good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin so the next one is the red question mark with the white color the white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus how can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God, hath, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him so if you have not accepted Jesus gift of forgiveness then let's pray and I will leave a space so you can repeat God thank you for loving me I confess that I have sinned against you I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so the next color is green. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the area of growth. Okay, so we have a heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. 
And so the next one is the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and His love. And the next one is a little praying person. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. The next one is baptism. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And the next one is hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. And the next one is the world with the cross. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in Him. Tell as many people as you can. So, that is the E-Band salvation message. So, if you prayed that prayer, then welcome to the Kingdom Family of God. And uh, your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. Um, you are now saved, sealed, sanctified, and through God, by God, through Jesus, His Son. So read the Bible every day. And, oh, uh, okay, love you, Josie. Hope you're feeling better. You have a good evening, too. My friend Josie has to leave. So read the Bible and pray every day and find some praise and worship music. I'm not doing too good with praise and worship music. I don't have nothing hooked in. So the past two nights I haven't been doing praise and worship music. So maybe I can remember that tomorrow. Anyway, oh, I won't be here tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday night and we have started youth again. So I won't be here tomorrow night. Maybe Thursday night, I can remember to bring my other phone and do my music. Um, today, I did buy me some um, wireless earphones. I'm very excited. It's my birthday present to myself. So, probably be using them in here to listen to music, I'm thinking, because my earbuds want to come out. Okay, so let us get a blessing from God and let us pray. Because I think I've done everything that God called me to come to do. Okay, so Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God wants us to have peace. God wants us to walk in the um, Spirit. He wants us to love each other. He wants us to accept each other. Too much non-acceptance going on right now too much hating on people because people don't agree with them it's too much of that that is not of God that is not of God you can't say that that is of God because it is not of God okay so my Beatitudes fell again I wonder if God wants me to read the Beatitudes. They keep falling. All right, well, let's read the Beatitudes. Then I'm going to lay them down because they keep falling. Okay, well, so this is the Beatitudes, and this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We are called to be the peacemakers. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So those are the Beatitudes that Jesus read on the Sermon of the Mount. And uh, I think I've broken these down before. Maybe I haven't. I don't know. But I will be back on Thursday. But I'm going to pray right now. And then I'm going to get off of here. I need to go take care of my son. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God, for, again, all the many blessings and all the mercies, God, that are new every day. God, you give us a new day. We might have had a bad day the day before. We might have failed the day before. But, God, you give us a new day every day where we can make better choices, where we can follow you closer, where we can read your word and pray and just and draw closer to you God you give us that opportunity you forgive us you reconcile our relationship as it is new God you are powerful and mighty and magnificent but God you are so loving and kind and patient and forgiving and faithful God you are all those things and so much more God, just help us. Help us to remember that Jesus goes before us, that we can rest in Him, that we can let Him lead the way for us, that He knows what's ahead of us and we don't, that He prepares our way. God, help us to remember that. Help us to remember that He is preparing a place for us and soon He will come and get us and usher us into that place that glorious place, that wonderful place, that place of peace and love and joy that never ends, that, pe that place of no sickness, that place of no pain, that perfect place called heaven. Help us to remember that, God. Help us to remember that by reading your word, you're preparing us for what you want us to do, God. You are teaching us, you are training us to fulfill our plan and purpose that you have for us, that you have planned for us. And that someday, God, we will know how everything fit together so intricately, so perfectly, things that we just didn't understand, God, will be so totally clear or either God just being in your presence and in the presence of Jesus and the Holy Spirit all things of this world will just fade away God I don't know which it's going to be but you do and so I trust you with everything that we have God we love you totally we love you with our whole heart our soul our mind and our strength we thank you for sending Jesus he is our Savior he is our Redeemer God we love him also with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And with Jesus, God, you sent us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does so many awesome things for us every day. We love him with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength also, God. We just love you. You are the one true God. You are the God three in one. That are, you are perfect in every way, God. Help us to encourage others. Help us to help others. Help us to lift each other up in prayer, God. Help us to be the brothers and sisters that you want us to be. Help us to be the light of Jesus in this dark and dying world. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, okay, my friends. Also, I want to pray, God, for all the children that are misplaced tonight, that are missing, God. We just pray for a rescue. We pray for our rescuers, God. We pray that you would keep them safe, that many people would be in prison for breaking the law. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm sorry. I do 
uh, do an intense prayer about that at night before I go to bed because that's when I start thinking about all the parents that can't sleep because their children are in they don't know where they are they don't know they have no idea where they are and um, I think about the things that they're going through so that is when I pray about that so God bless you all and your families abundantly have an awesome rest of your night and awesome tomorrow which is Wednesday I will not be here Wednesday I'll be at you so much love much love and cyber hugs till I see you again good night